Welcome to She Who Believes, the podcast. Great day. You're listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. Here we encourage you to stretch your faith and to celebrate you because you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of Almighty God. And so we're going to jump right into our declaration. Each week, our declaration comes from the same scripture. It's Luke 1 and 45. And we ask that you do two things, that you join in with us declaring the scripture over your life and that you replace the word woman or she, depending on the version you're declaring from, with your very own name. We we ask that you put your name in and that you speak this truth about yourself. Well, this week I'm making this declaration from the message version of the Bible. And if you guys are ready, here we go. Blessed Vivian, who believed what God said, believed every word would come true. I never, ever get tired of this scripture. I never get tired of this scripture. I never get tired of this declaration because I know that words create, that they are powerful. And because we are made in the image of almighty God, that we can speak his truth into existence in our lives. So blessed is Vivian. Who has believed every word that God has said to me is going to come true? And now we are going to discuss legacy moves. Tonight's legacy move is that I'm going to tell you that it is not too late. So each week we talk about legacy moves, right? What we wanna leave in the earth. I have a question for you. What if your best move is the one that you're being called to make right now? I know you may be thinking that I have no idea how old you are, what you've done, how you've blown things. And you're right, I don't know that. But what I do know is a 320 kind of God. Oh yes, a 320 kind of God. Ephesians 320 to be exact. In the New International Version, it says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Now, what our God can do, it cannot be measured. It's more than what you can ask, think, or even imagine. So I have a question for you. Are you still dreaming? Can you see a glimpse of the promise that God has made to you? See, this part of the scripture, the next part, really excites me because it tells us that it's according to his power that works within us. So now you see why it does not matter how old you are, what you've done, or if you think you have the power to do what it is God is calling you to do. It is by his power working within you that will fulfill his promises in your life. God's power never fails. The only thing that fails is man when we refuse to get up and to step out in faith and do just what God has called us to do. I pray that in this week you'll dream again, that you'll imagine again, and that you'll ask again, and that you'll ask believing God to fulfill everything that he has promised to do in and through you in the earth. And now it's time for our business shout out. This week, we've got a special guest, one of my favorite entrepreneurs. You guys help me welcome Lenard Hayes of Sparkly Clean Services. Hello, how are we doing this evening? Wonderful, Mr. Hayes. How are you? We're doing just fine. Good. Well, thank you for joining us on She Who Believes, the podcast. 
Um, well, I wanted to just ask you a couple business questions. As I stated, you're one of my favorite entrepreneurs. So let me ask you, what led you to start your business? Well, the job that I was working on was in Pan as well, for one. For two, I figure if I can work that hard for someone else, I can work that hard for myself. So true. That's definitely a, a good way to look at it. I think that's what made a lot of us start um, our own businesses. Um, just deciding that, hey, I'm working really hard, so why not build something for myself and for the next generation? So let me ask you this. How do you think your business represents the kingdom? Well, with honesty and integrity, um, when your words and your actions matches, that's proof that God is working and the, the, the um, tithes and offerings they are working okay. together. So when all these things working together, that represents the kingdom of God. Okay. So let me ask you this. What what advice would you give to another Christian business owner or just an entrepreneur period or someone who's considering starting their business? What kind of advice would you give? I will give them this advice. Pray in the morning. Pray throughout the day. Pray at the end of, <laughs> pray at the end of your day. Because prayer is going to help you adjust to things that happen throughout the day that you weren't expecting. And you're going to respond in, in a Christian manner. And you, you're not going to get all bent out of shape. You're going to be able to adjust and, and, and fix whatever the circumstance and the problem is quicker. Even when customers get out of line and don't want to participate according to, to the structure of your business. So I would say pray, pray, and pray again. Amen to that. <laughs> well, let me ask you another question. So um, when you're done providing your service, um, even if it's a customer that, as you say, is not following the structure of business and how it's set up, what's the one thing you want to stay with your customer when you walk away from them? That we provided the service that we said we was going to provide and that they see that we truly care about the, the, the person and care about the service that we provided. That way, you, they, they'll give you referrals, and they said, and and they, you leave that impression in their mind that that's a good company, and the and the, and the guys there are um, good people. Okay. And so let me ask you another question. So I know you've been in business for a while and I've really seen God do some things in your business for you. Um, let me ask you this. Have you ever wanted to quit? I can't say I, I have ever wanted to quit. May got tired, but quit. I didn't get in this to, to quit. I, I don't have a plan B. So I, quitting is, is, is never an option. You just regroup. You just pray some more and see what needs to be done and sometimes things will get real slow around you but you can't never want to quit i love that quitting is not an option i totally uh, just love that mindset so um i was gonna ask my next follow-up question was gonna be what kept you from giving up what what made you stay i know you said that quitting was an, not an option and i know that um, there have been times where many of us, some people that are listening, may have felt the same way, but then they got to a place where they either gave up or they wanted to give up. What keeps you when you get to that place where it's slow around you, as you stated, like business is slow, you know, moving, customers are moving slow, and maybe it's kind of a lull in your season. What keeps you going? If, it, if quitting is not an option, I know you said you don't have a plan B. What actually keeps you going, though? Well, you have the... You have to keep in mind that things will get slow and everything ain't going to always go the way that, 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 that you would hope or would like. So you kind of like, a, you just learn to adjust. At, at first, when, when, when these things begin to happen, you, you, you kind of get kind of flustered. I don't know, Lord, is this for me? But as, as, as long as you stay in it, you learn how to adjust to those, 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 those times and moments quicker. So you, you just you just gotta you gotta notice you gotta notice and then also you notice when those times and those seasons are, are, are coming when in your business there are certain times and moments in your in your in the, in the and throughout the year that your business may be slower than others so as you go along as you learn you know when those when those about to come so now you're more of aware so so the more you stay in it the more you learn how your business it, it operates. So you'll be able to adjust quicker. So you you don't you don't feel like 
I um I'm, I might want to quit. I know it's about this time, so I gotta I gotta be more careful. I gotta be more wise about the, the way I operate my money and um my time and all these circumstances as they come into play. Okay, for sure. Um, so last question, and again, we just want to thank you for your time. Um, what advice would you give to someone who is considering giving up on their dreams? They're like literally about to shut down business walk out the door and it's not because they are in business and they didn't speak God. They speak God. He gave them a word and it's, it's bad. It's, it's gotten really bad. What would you tell that person? Well, if, if you have gotten to that point, I mean, and there's no no, there's no income. There's no things being generated, and the doors are really about to close. You need to really seek God and make sure that you need that that's where you need to be. Because if 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 things around me got to that to that point to that place, I really begin to seek God, and maybe this is not the area where I need to be in. So that's why I say always be praying, always be seeking God along the way. So you know where you where you're supposed to be at. That that's really um great advice because also two seasons can change for you. I know for myself, um, this is actually my fourth business, and I um entered into all of my businesses seeking God and I'm um, getting his direction. And I remember feeling like, okay, God, what happened? He like why is this not working? Why is nothing happening? But now in this business where I am now and in the, having the multiple streams of um, revenue, um, I can see how God used all of those times to actually bless me and teach me more things about business. Um, so it wasn't that I was not um, in his will. And it may be, again, like, like you said, we, like, like I expressed earlier, that person prayed and God directed them there. But then they get back to a place where they pray again because God may be doing something new and something different. And they don't want to miss that just because he spoke one thing in a previous season. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah. things, do, things do change. And, and you want to be able to change. When, when God moves, you want to be able to move. So, I mean, I'm always being watchful. If, if, if my business is not doing what I think it should be doing, it's to make sure that is, is God moving or, or, or what's going on, or is just a time and a season that my business is, is not it's not being as fruitful, fruitful as it should be at, at that time. And, it's, and there's potential for it to change. So you just got to be in tune with what's going on around you and what's going on with your business at the same time that you're seeking God. I love that about the potential part because sometimes we never know what God is doing and how he's working a thing out. And so um, I think, I guess that even though that was kind of a loaded question, I guess, because there are so many different scenarios to that. And it could be that you're in that place. And um, my current business, actually, um, I was totally like in this business for three years before I ever saw any kind of a profit. Um, but the thing that kept me going is that God kept speaking to me about my business and he kept giving me um, visions of my business and telling me what my next steps were and to do this next and do that next and do this next. So for me, because he kept speaking, that was my indication that I was still in the right place, still in, in God's will in reference to business. So, um, yeah, I guess there are a lot of different answers to that last question. And I think we answered them all very well. Um, well, well it, it, everybody's not going to get the, those steps spoken to them. So if, 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 if everything continues to move in a direction that your business need to be become in alignment, that's another indication that you are. Um, are in the right place. If it if it continues to line up and it's continued to to be, to come together, that's that's another indication that um you're in the right place as well. That's true. That is true. Well, we want to thank you for your time tonight. Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, no. Yes, everybody that's seeking to be an entrepreneur, seek God first. Keep keep prayerful. Be sure that you tithe and off and give offerings. And don't um I know I, I say I don't have a plan B, but 
don't be too proud if something was to change and you stay in that thing and and it's going down and, and it's not being productive. You may have to go try something else. Don't don't be too proud and, and don't feel so bad and um if, if it fails. So, Cause you, you can't let yourself be uh what's the word? You can't let yourself get down because there's other ways of making means making means um ends meet. So don't 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 be too proud if the business begin to fail or whatever. I agree with that. And I think that goes back to what you were saying about staying prayerful and seeking God, because if we're seeking God, he's going to direct us even in a season where our business may be closing or ending, because again, that may be the end of the season of that particular thing. And he may be wanting to do something greater or move us on to something else. So like you said, we can't get too prideful in that place and just decide, Hey, I put my all in this and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to move. But if God is telling us to move, We'll know that because we're seeking him. So, yeah, that was really great advice. Anything else, though? Manage your up and downs. Just manage your up and downs. Okay. Manage them. Because they're going to be the... All of these things are true. Well, Mr. Hayes, um, do you want to um, tell us a little bit about your business before we go? I know I introduced you as the owner of Parkinson Services, but I'd like to give you a few moments to actually just tell them what your business does and the services that you offer. Well, we're a mobile detail service and pool service and pressure washing service. Um, we soft wash on roofs, houses, driveways, pool decks, and the things of that sort. So you don't have to worry about it in the paint removal or um, towels being broken on the roof. So we we just we we um provide three ser- three services, and we do all all detailing of boats, RVs, uh, you name it. We we clean it. So yeah, we do a little bit of everything. So if you ever have any need of sparkly clean services, give us a call at seven two seven six seven eight six four seven eight. Well, you've heard. All of this good information from Mr. Hayes tonight, again, the owner of Sparkly Clean Services. We want to thank you for your time, and I pray that this year is your most prosperous year yet, Mr. Hayes. Thank you much. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Talk to you soon. Okay. it's time to be inspired by our inspiration portion of the podcast. Well, this week's title may not sound inspiring, but I will ask you to stay with me just a few moments. I promise you it's going to bless you. But the title of this week's podcast is called When Your Miracle Dies. Again, I know that doesn't sound very encouraging, but I promise you it's going to you will have more insight in just a few more moments. There's been a lot of loss for many of you who listen to this podcast. You've believed God to do great and mighty things and he's done them. But then this. Now, whatever your this is, it has you questioning God, yourself and everything about your life. Well, tonight I want to share a story with you. This story comes from 2 Kings 4, 18 through 37. Now, I'm going to give you a little backstory here. Um, before we get to these verses, there was a Shunammite woman. Um, she was from Shunem. And um, it's funny how the Bible gives different names to things like John the Baptist. It meant that he was a baptizer. But anyway, the Shunammite woman, um, she was convinced. Um, she had convinced her husband, I'm sorry, to build a room in their home for the prophet Elisha. The prophet would pass through the city and she knew that he was a man of God and she wanted to bless him. So eventually her husband agreed. And one day the prophet thought to himself, this woman has done so much for us, him and his servant. He said to his servant, what can we do for her? So he had his servant call her and she stood in the doorway. And he asked her, well, can I do this? Can I speak to the king for you? Can I?" And everything that seemed big and major he asked her about it and she says, oh, no, I'm good. Um, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm in, I, I got that on lock. Uh, I, I, this is taken care of for me. But he was still pondering in his mind, what can we do for her? And so eventually his servant said, well, 
she doesn't have a child and her husband is old. So that led us to believe that pretty much that door is closed for her. Well, back then to be barren was considered a disgrace. You were seen as unvaluable to many. Now yet this woman never even considered asking the prophet for a child. And so I start thinking that perhaps maybe she stopped believing or she believed, but her disappointment outweighed her belief because she had been disappointed over and over again. Perhaps her spirit had become mute in a way of it caused her to avoid asking for the miracle any longer. But the prophet advised her that she would bear a child. And so this is where we find ourselves now in um, this, the scripture that I mentioned to you earlier. And I'm going to read this to you from the New International Version. And I'll start with verse 18. It says, the child grew and one day he went out to his father who was with the reapers. He said to his father, my head, my head. And his father told the servant, carry him to his mother. Now, after the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, please send me one of your servant, one of the servants and a donkey so I can go see the man of God quickly and return. Why go to him today, he asked. It is not the new moon or the Sabbath. That's all right, she said. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, lead on, don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant Gehazi, look, there's the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Everything is all right, she said. Oh, glory to God. When she reached the man of God at the mountain, she took hold to his feet. Gehazi came over to push her away, but the man of God said, leave her alone. She is in bitter distress, but the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me why. Did I ask you for a son, my Lord, she said. Didn't I tell you don't raise my hopes? Elisha said to Gehazi, tuck your cloak into your belt, take my staff in your hand and run. Don't greet anyone you meet and if anyone greets you, do not answer. Lay my staff on the boy's face. But the child's mother said, as surely, surely, as the Lord lives and you live, I will not leave you. So he got up and he followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the boy's face, but there was no sound or response. So Gehazi went back to meet Elisha and told him, the boy has not awakened. When Elijah reached the house, there was the boy lying dead on his couch. He went in, shut the door on the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed and lay on the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. As he stretched himself out on him, the boy's body grew warm. Elisha turned away and walked back and forth in the room and then got on the bed and stretched out on him once more. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Now Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, call the Shunammite. And he did. When she came, he said, take your son. She came in, fell at his feet and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. This may seem like a peculiar story to share, but as I told you, this is going to be a blessing to the person who has already decided they're gonna give up. 
You may have decided you're giving up on your marriage, on yourself. You may be grieving the loss of a loved one. You may even be considering suicide. But I want you to know that God can resurrect the dead. The power of God, it is not dead. It is not all lost. I know it feels like it, but if you have breath in your body, God still has a purpose for you. I want to go back to the scriptures. And when the boy said to his father, my head, my head, he told his servant to carry him to his mother. He didn't ask the boy any questions. He didn't ask any details. And so me, my mind wonders, as you guys know, um, if you've been listening to this podcast for any length of time, and I just thought this man asked nothing of this child. He asked no, he had no apparent concerns. But then I recall, I remember that the, the servant Gehazi said to the prophet, she has no child and her husband is old. He didn't say they are old. He said her husband is old. So that led me to believe that her husband was much older than her. And maybe he was just in that place of life. He didn't have the strength to deal with a child. Or maybe he just said, this was your mother's dream. This, you are her dream. So I'm going to send you to her. But the thing I love about it is that she stopped what she was doing. She had to, because it says this boy sat on her lap until noon and then he died. So she had taken her promise, her living, breathing, walking promise, and she was caressing it in her arms, holding the child, the blessing, the miracle that God had given to her, nurturing it, holding on to it for what I would think is dear life, as so we say in this day and time. You would think that this was this woman's desire and God sent his prophet to give her this answer to a prayer that I just believe she had prayed many, many years. And even though she had given up asking for it, God had not stopped hearing her. He heard her the first time and that was really all it took. So God was fulfilling that promise. So here she is. She did not cry. She did not mourn this child. She laid him on the bed of the man of God and she shut the door and went out. So again, if you know me, I'm going to research some things. And so um, I wanted to find out what was the significance of doors. And um, according to Bible scholars, they say that doors signify communication and agreement. Now, often when doors are open, they were in communication with God and with others. When they were closed, they did not communicate or were not in agreement. And so it made me think that, glory to God, the boy was in the room. She shut the door on her son. She didn't tell anybody. She shut, she was not in agreement with him dying. She was not in agreement with the promise that God gave to her, this miracle being dead. And she proved that in her next steps. She took faith moves. She called her husband, but when she called him, it was not to cry out. It was to ask him to send her transportation to the man of God. She said, I got to get back to where my promise came from. I've got to get back to the place of where this miracle first originated. God's calling you back to that place because he wants to encourage you. He wants to remind you of that moment when he spoke his promise to you. Her husband said, why are you going to him today? It's not the new moon and it is not the Sabbath. She said, that's all right. (laughs) That's all right. So check this out. She said, that's all right. Before she ever left the house, Knowing what she had left upstairs, which was the body of her son. But she said, that's all right. Glory to God. So the husband asked no more questions. He allowed the servant to take her on. And I love how she said, lead on, but don't you dare slow down unless I tell you. She said, don't, don't, don't do me any favors by getting in my way of my miracle. Because see, he did it once. He's going to do it again. And so I want to go back to where her husband questioned her. There are going to be people who question why it is that in this season, you pick that dream back up. 
that spark that you're feeling in your spirit that's that as I'm speaking you are thinking well maybe I will believe just one more time don't worry about people who don't understand it because see this was her miracle the word was never even spoken to her husband though he had to participate to get this child uh produced it wasn't his miracle it was hers And so she kept believing because it was hers and not his. So when people don't believe what God has spoken to you or understand why you're moving again in the season, just keep moving and do like the woman told the servant, lead on and do not slow me down. Don't allow anyone to slow you down in this season when God is calling you back to this dream, to this miracle, to this promise, because he's going to fulfill it. The thing that also blessed me um, that had not stood out to me before, and maybe it it stood out more this time because I am still, yes, I'm still in the seven week study of Elijah and it's been longer than seven weeks, but it's okay. (laughs) Um, And she, when she got there, it says, so she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. Now, many of you may know this. Many of you may not. Mount Carmel is the same mountain that his predecessor that Elisha's predecessor Elijah stood on when he challenged the prophets of Baal 400 of them and he called down fire from God from heaven and God sent fire down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice so on this very same mountain there had been miracles performed and there stood the man of God who had given her who had spoken who had prophesied her previous miracle so now when he saw her from a distance he said ask her when you meet her are you all right is your husband all right and is your child all right so I'm going to stop there because I noted to you guys earlier that when the husband said to her why are you going to the prophet today this woman already said what she said that's all right now remember how previously in previous podcasts we talked about how God will send his word ahead like Jesus sent the word ahead with Lazarus and he said he is sleeping he is not dead and then when he got there he's like Lazarus is dead and they were like what we're confused but what he was saying oh he died in the physical but this is for the glory of God so he sent that word ahead this woman sent her word ahead she said it's all right it is all right she was resolute she already knew that what God had promised to her was going to live again so she told him it's all right so as she got closer to the prophet then he saw her distress. Now his his servant, who we won't talk about, uh, maybe we'll talk about him at a later time because he had some issues. He was special. Um, he was telling her, don't touch the prophet. But Elisha said, leave her alone because the, the thing that stood out to me, he says, because she is deeply, bitterly distressed and the Lord has hid this thing from me and has not told me why. Now, see, that was strange for a prophet like Elisha, who was the predecessor of Elijah, who God spoke to. And, and, and of course, I mean, you're a prophet. He's giving you an advanced word to tell someone. He's giving you a word to go prophesy because that word is going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. The word of God never falls to the ground. And so he said, the Lord hid this from me. And he's like, hey, what, what's happening? I believe that this woman coming back to the prophet about this promise and challenging him and said, Hey, I didn't ask you for this. I told you don't get my hopes up. Don't raise my hopes. But then you gave me this child. Now what's up? But see, it wasn't just about her faith. Now it was going to have to be about Elisha's because he said, the Lord hid this thing from me. He wasn't prepared. Now he's got to go stand in the gap and pray for another miracle for this woman so he told Gehazi to go ahead of him he gave him instructions and that woman said oh no because as sure as the Lord is alive and you're living I'm not leaving you what she was saying to him is homeboy you going back with me you started this and you're going to finish it and so here's your word you started out walking what God has told you to walk out and it doesn't seem like it's producing what you want it to produce or maybe your life isn't painting out the way you dreamed it would or even that that vision that God gave you as a child as a young woman as a young man and it doesn't seem to be manifesting in that way <laughs> you have got to remain resolute you've got to say Lord, I need you to touch this thing again. 
So he sent Gehazi ahead, but he was not able to resurrect the child. He came back and said, hey, look, this, this child didn't wake up. But I love this because when Elisha got there, it says there the boy was lying on his couch dead. But what he did, this time he went in and shut the door on the two of them. So earlier I talked about how do, what the what doors represented, right? And so I believe the woman shut the door because I need it to be known in the atmosphere in this world. I need it to be known to death. I am not in agreement with you. This is not what my God has said to me. This was not the promise of the prophet. But when the prophet went into that room and all power and authority, he shut that door going in with an expectation for God to be in the room with him and to perform that miracle. And I'm going to tell you how I know this, because when he first came in that room, the boy was still dead. So he got on the boy. He laid on him prostrate. First of all, he prayed to God. That's the most important thing. He prayed to God. And so I believe this was God's instructions because he prayed for guidance. Lord, I need you. I'm here. I spoke this word and it looks like it has fallen to the ground. But because I trust you, I'm going to pray to you. I'm going to ask you. So then he did what he was instructed. He got on the bed and lay on the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hand. Now, our mouth has words. We speak words from our mouth. They are either life or death to us. Our eyes determine whether we are looking in the physical or the spiritual on whether or not we hold fast to our faith. And our hands, oh, our hands, we've got to put our hands to work because God has promised to bless the work of our hands. So his mouth, his eyes, and his hands, he put them to the boys. And then he stretched himself out on him and then the boy's body grew warm, but he still wasn't yet alive. Elijah turned away, walked back and forth in the room. Then he got on the bed and stretched out on him once more. You see, cause I did what you said, but I don't have the results you said, but you're still speaking to me. So I'm going to do what you said again. And he laid on the boy once more. See, some of us are right at our once more and almost ready to give up, I want to encourage you to not give up, to try once more. And the boy sneezed seven times and he opened his eyes. I believe that God is getting ready to resurrect some things in your life. I believe that God is getting ready to resurrect that business, that marriage, that child who may seem wayward. I believe God... I just believe him. I trust him. So here I am declaring his word over your life according to his instructions to me. I pray that you'll believe God and that you'll wait with a great expectation in your spirit for God to touch your miracle once more. Heavenly Father, we come to you now just thanking you for being a God of your word. We thank you for your word today, Lord God. And we want to declare that we believe it And we stand waiting with an expectation of any instructions you may give to us. But we stand waiting, Lord God, with an expectation for you to touch it again and to bless it. In Jesus' name, amen. You are listening to the podcast, She Who Believes. Thank you for joining us today. May your faith be counted unto you as righteousness.